Hello and welcome to this week's video. Now, this week I'm going to be looking at some more wildlife photography. So, if you have um, an interest in landscape photography, what I would do is direct you to last week's video, which was taken up in the Isle of the Sky, where I did some um, some landscape photography in probably not the normal locations that you see on Sky. So, there's a link to that video above me there. Now, this week. Uh, for a wildlife photography video what I've decided to do is really do a follow-on from my last wildlife photography video in that video I was trying to get people to move away from taking images of garden birds and things which is like the first step into wildlife photography and to move into sort of their local area and find a patch quite close to them that they can really research and um, get some wildlife images out now when I'd done that video I suddenly thought well that might be quite a big step for some people to actually um, go away from photographing garden birds and then you know what do they do how do they approach um, looking at a new area now for me something that's forced my hand slightly is the fact that I live quite close to the River Trent and all a lot of my wildlife areas that I use have been completely flooded for the last well they've been flooded twice in the last sort of 10 weeks I would say now the effect that has on those areas is that as you'll, as you'll imagine the, the, the bigger wildlife so your foxes, your deer, your hares most of those can get out of the way of the flood water they can move on somewhere else but all your smaller stuff like your voles, your mice all that type of, of uh, animal most of those are going to have perished really um, so therefore that means that when that flood water recedes that area is going to be quite barren for a long period of time until all those creatures have moved back in so you know your foxes and things won't come back until there's a food source which generally is voles and mice and things that they'll feed on quite a lot so with that in mind what I thought I'd do is I needed to find a new area to do some wildlife photography so what I've done I've come to an area that's slightly higher up an area I've not been before it's again I think some old gravel extraction sites and you'll see from the map that there's quite a few lakes never been here before in my life so it's completely new to me but I just wanted to show you what I do when I come to a new place and the sort of things I'm looking for sorry I don't think that's probably not caught on video but a kingfisher's just come and landed behind me then shot off so already I've been here sort of 10 minutes. We have kingfishers on site, so that might be something I'm looking at putting purchase in for later on today. So we might be looking at that in a while. But yeah, I mean, for me, coming to a new place, really I just wanted to show you what I do to set up that area and to look for what wildlife is there so that in the weeks to come, I can be best place to get images of that wildlife. Now I probably won't get anything today, I'm not sure. Um, but I thought it was useful just to show you the process that I go through. And um, you know, if we get some Im images, brilliant. But then what I will do, I'll hark back to this video when I do take some wildlife so that you can see if it's working or not. So anyway, that's what I'm gonna do today. We'll have a walk around, we'll see if we can find out what's here. Um, and I'll show you if I find where there are areas where potentially there are animals what I might do to prepare to get images of those animals when they are there okay right I don't know whether you can see but, but while I was doing the introduction to this video this is the stem that the kingfisher came and landed on there's a little bridge there that I was sat on now I can see the reason it's sitting on this it's quite a dark a um, a deep pool down here it's shallow around the edge but there's a deep section where this drain runs in so it's obviously cut out a bowl section there which lots of small fish are probably hiding so it obviously likes to come and land on here so it can fish in that pool now I don't particularly like this stem I mean if it lands on it brilliant I'll take some images um, but what I've done I've been and got slightly more attractive in my mind perch and what I'm going to do, I'm going to place it here slightly more over the water in sort of that position and then that obviously gives the kingfisher something else to land on it's a little bit more over the water as well so I'm hoping that that might entice it to come and stand on it and then 
there are several places to shoot. I think probably a little bit earlier in the day over on the other riverbank there. If I can get under cover there somewhere it might be quite useful. But anyway, I'm going to put this in today. If I can, let's see. Right, and hopefully we'll get a kingfisher landing on it. Right, I just thought I'd get back to you because I've just done sort of a quick walk through the site. Now this bridleway which comes from the road which you can probably still hear in the background to this point it's only about a kilometer I would say but there's a good mixture of habitats so if you can see behind me on this side and also over there we've obviously got farm, farm fields um, one's still got stubble in it the other one I think has already been ploughed and then we've got a woodland edge all the way around the outside. Now that, that for me is ideal territory for brown hares sort of in a couple of months time or perhaps even only a month. Um, and what it allows me to do is to get into the side of the woodland. So I can get into the side of the woodland and, and obviously view the hares without them seeing me and hopefully have them potentially come close to the camera. So that's point one. Now what I've also realised is, as you walk down, the woodland on the right here is completely dry. Um, it must be a little bit higher up. So, that's one that potentially can use at the minute. And there will be deer, etc. in there, probably muntjac jack and roe deer. It's not very large, but what deer in my experience what they tend to do is, is hop between woodlands and use the fields in between so you'll see them coming across a field and normally going to another woodland and then they'll stop in there all day and then they'll hop to the next one or whatever or back to where they've come from. Muntjac deer tend to be undercover a lot of the time. Uh, I have seen footprints down here, can't see any just here but there are some deer footprints so I know they're around. So. We know we've got roe deer, probably muntjac as well I would say. Ideal for brown hares and I would be very surprised if there aren't any hares in this field. It's been quite quiet for, what I find with brown hares is that you tend to see eight or nine all together and then they can go completely quiet and you can't see them and I think people tend to think that they, they live in fields year round, they don't actually, they, they also live in the woodland. So in really bad weather they will go into the woodland and and sort of hide down in there. I was doing a little bit more exploring in the woodland and um, I do like to show you if I see any field signs I will try and point them out to you. So I've just come across this one here and it's a classic um, sign that there's deer around and that's what deer tend to do before the rut when the males have got the antlers number one they want to leave a scent mark in places but also they want to try and get the velvet off the horns and uh, if you can see here it's classic sign of a, a sapling that's had its bark scrubbed off and that's purely because a, a deer has been rubbing its antlers up the side of it and it's scrubbed all the bark so that's a really you know a good sign to show you that there are deer in the area Right, I've had a very good look round this um, this old gravel pit now, this lake, and I have to say, from looking at it, the only side that's really accessible is this side, and I say that for a couple of reasons. I have been all the way around it, but on the far side, it's literally, in places, it's brambles above head height, and I'm not joking about that. Now, for two reasons, I'm, I'm ruling that side out. One is, yeah I can get through the brambles if I want to and I can make myself a path but it's going to cause a hell of a lot of destru destruction to the, the undergrowth really. I don't mind you know moving the odd branch or whatever but 
to make a path through there it's literally you're going to need a machete and I don't really want to do that and number two I think even if you did that it's going to be so disruptive trying to get through you know there are literally brambles at everything from a foot high up to above head and you know you'll be tripping all over the place especially as what I'd like to do if I'm going to take images of wildfowl is get here while it's still dark so I want really easy quick access so I think that rules that side out now there's a couple of places on this side where I've got access this is the one that gives you the biggest view across the lake and it's the easiest access actually I can walk straight in and down here I'm not going to be tripping over anything or you know brushing through uh, underbrush or anything which is brilliant what I'd ideally like to do is get as close to the water as possible so I think here I'm going to be limited to about that height with the tripod so basically I'm going to be in sat down here now important things to remember when you're doing this is it's all right to say get down as low to the water as possible but you are going to be in that position for probably two three hours there's no point getting into a ridiculous position so you're right low to the water but you can only you know stand staying there for 10 minutes before your back gives up or whatever so you've got to be comfortable so I think you know sat in here which is about a foot away from the water and you know I probably have my wellies in the water actually when I'm doing the shooting set the tripod up here get under cover and I can come straight in without any disturbance as I say I'd get here when it's still dark get under cover when it's still dark and then you're just waiting so that's really so that Hopefully anything that's on the lake might be further down there and is likely to come up this way is not going to fly off because you're you know making a racket coming through the underbrush and obviously you're under cover so that anything that comes in later won't see you and you, you know I'm sort of covered from that side and then I've got all this open area here where hopefully that the the waterfowl will come in and I can take some images so anyway that's the plan this is this one's virtually set up now I don't really need to do a lot to it which is brilliant I know I can just come in but I know it's here I'm not coming on the day and trying to find a place I can come straight in here Right, I hope you've enjoyed the video this week. Um, it's been a, a change for me and it's been quite refreshing to have to start again. You do, when you've been doing wildlife as long as me and, and in a small area a lot of the time, you do get to know it really well. And because I've had to move because of the flooding and um, it's made me you know, have to move to a new site that I've never been to before, a lot of the stuff I've had to start again. So you're seeing it right from the beginning. The images on this video, I don't want you to think that I came up, never been here before, looked around and then shot all these images and shot all this footage. That's not how it happened. The first visit was when I shot most of the footage talking to the camera and talking to you guys. And then it was a couple, no, probably four visits it's taken me to get the footage to add to this video. And that's simply because on the first vi visit what I was doing, I was as I explained on the video I was looking at the best places to take the images from once I'd done that it was a case of coming back you know early morning most of the time when it's still dark and getting in position and then just waiting so you know there's no way I could do that on a first visit so I don't think it's really it's dead easy it's not um, it does take a bit of work and um, you know it, but it's enjoyable so you know there's not a problem with that um, I'm hoping to come back over the year and obviously I'm gonna encounter other animals no doubt throughout that time so I'll do other videos from here then uh, I was just thinking actually the water's so lovely and smooth here it would be great in the summer to get some grass snakes coming across it that would look fantastic so fingers crossed for that that's something else I'm keeping my eye out for and we'll uh, we'll hope to get that in the future anyway if you've enjoyed the video please give it a like um, please, please give it a thumbs up and if you've not yet subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel, click on the notification bell, and then you will be notified every time I upload some new content. Um, I'm hoping to do some landscape next couple of weeks, as well as I'm still, fingers crossed, we're gonna get some snow 
so that I can do some mountain hares in the snow rather than um, on sort of brown moorland so we'll see what happens with that and the weather anyway that's me done for today and I'll see you next time